Hey, Loud Winners, it's Loudy Six here, and I'm in the middle of the jungle with a bunch of monkeys in China. It's a hot autumn day here in Hong Kong. You wouldn't believe this, but I was in the taxi and I was headed towards this uh, area where I was going to pick up some stuff I needed. And as we were driving by, I saw a sign and it said, don't feed the monkeys. And there's a fine. And I was like, is there a zoo nearby? So I'm chatting with the taxi driver. He said, no, there's wild monkeys everywhere around here. And I was like, are you, are you, are you kidding me? There's wild monkeys in China? Well, Hong Kong? And he's like, yeah, there's just thousands of them. There's tons of monkeys. And I was like, can you see them? And he goes, yeah, there's like a trail. So I, uh, <laughs> I stopped my taxi cab about halfway to my destination. And now I find myself about two hours into a, uh, <laughs> a nature trail up here. And uh, sure enough, I just saw some playing in the, in the trees swinging around uh, from a distance, but I hope to get a little bit closer to them. This is absolutely gorgeous, guys. I mean, like I'm walking through this trail in this very deep jungle with all these vines and I, see, I saw some snakes birds chirping and uh, I think there's wild coffee plants and bamboo forests. It's absolutely gorgeous up here and it's stuff I just can't find in mainland China. It's funny because we're literally like I can almost see mainland China from here. I can almost see, you know, the city of Shenzhen. And there's this weird divide when you cross the border in nature and you look at the line of where Hong Kong is and then where China, mainland China is and you'll actually see the formation of trees change. And it makes no sense because why would the trees be any different, you know, meters across the road or across the river from Hong Kong? Well, that's because under Chairman Mao, under his rule, basically everyone was snatching up all the wood and stuff to make their uh, backyard furnaces for their uh, steel production quotas. So Mao said we have to have a certain amount of steel to beat the Soviet Union. People cut down all the trees. They're eating the leaves because there was a famine. Completely destroyed the countryside. This so is what you see now. Over there, it's still incredibly green. I mean, we're still in Southern China, but it's all planted like in neat little rows. So pretty out here. Um, but they're all organized. I call them organized trees. And they just look like someone, you know, gridded it out and then threw a bunch of seeds on the floor. Here in Hong Kong, it's much messier in a good way, much more natural, no pun intended. But um, man, it's just so pretty out here. And I really want to see some of these monkeys, not just their silhouette in the trees. Honestly, being up here and, uh, you know, recognizing the fact that there are actual, is actual wildlife here uh, kind of surprised me. It makes me want to talk about something. And it reminded me of, of something I've experienced in, in China and living there for eight years now. But that's the, uh, this prolific idea that traditional Chinese medicine or TCM is a, is a very natural and holistic awesome cure. And it's becoming quite popular with Westerners abroad as well. And the broad term of traditional Chinese medicine obviously covers thousands of different things, but in general, you'll, you'll find that in China, it is the primary way to treat or prevent illness. And that, it bothers me in some ways because this seemingly holistic, beautiful, you know, non-invasive kind of the chi, the yin and the yang and all this kind of stuff, all of this is very, very natural in the eyes of, of a lot of people, including people abroad. And it's not just people here in China. And they don't understand some of the more grim aspects of Chinese medicine because it does cover a lot of things that a lot of people would be completely against. Traditional Chinese medicine can get super weird. And I'm talking like hedgehog genitals. I'm talking like armadillos. I'm talking like camel hump meat. But then things can get really wrong too. And that's where you find things like rhino horn or tiger penis. Tiger penis or sea turtles. For God's sakes, the coast I live on in Huizhou actually has a sea turtle conservatory. And I kid you not, there is a sea turtle restaurant literally right down the road. The thing is, I've never been an animal rights type of guy. I mean, I like animals. I don't particularly love keeping pets or anything. I mean, I have a pet, I've had a pet bird and a couple dogs and a couple cats here and there, but you know, I don't, I'm not a huge animal dude. There's something really ironic about the effect of traditional Chinese medicine or TCM the supposed, you know, natural remedy for everything. That's just the excessive nature of the destruction of, you know, the wildlife and animals around. And, uh, you know, Cantonese people in the most southernmost province that I live in, in China, 
are super, super well known for <laughs> their excessive consumption of rare or endangered animals. And it's led to some animals extinction. I have been in scenarios with some family members where we were at a restaurant in a mountain similar to this, and they were serving lynx, and they were serving rare birds and fish that they definitely shouldn't be serving, that's for sure. A quick Google search definitely confirmed that. And obviously I didn't want to consume those by choice, but for them it was a medicinal thing. For them it was almost like, I can spend this amount of money to buy this super rare animal. And it seemed like the rarer the animal, the more potential medical effects it had. So my uh, mother-in-law, for example, has really bad eyes. She's getting like cataracts or something. So she eats all kind of, kinds of weird stuff to, you know, to combat that as well. And, you know, other people in the family and other people that we know uh, in Guangdong have consumed, some, you know, very various snakes and all kinds of rare sea life in order to combat their illnesses as well. And it's definitely a, you know, a case of the placebo effect. Tiger penis is often consumed for erectile dysfunction or things going on downstairs not quite popping up, you know. And obviously it's a placebo effect because, you know, protein is protein. Whatever you're eating, if it's an animal, it's going to contain basically the same nutrients and proteins as any other animal. So it's very strange. And you'll see some of these things just going for absolutely exorbitant prices. And that's the ironic thing, is that traditional Chinese medicine is not just acupuncture. Traditional Chinese medicine is not just herbal remedies. TCM encompasses a very, very wide scope of very strange beliefs that, you know, you can't just pick and choose as to which ones you want. You have to understand that for the majority of wealthy Cantonese people or a lot of people in China, Traditional Chinese medicine is not like, oh, I'm totally okay with that, but I'm not okay with that. Like a lot of people I know have consumed things that would be deemed highly illegal or, you know, highly, highly immoral to consume. I'm gonna get you, monkey. I'm gonna get you. Please don't throw shit at me. Where is he? He's like running away. The monkeys actually have a super interesting story here in Hong Kong. Apparently when they were, uh, you know, the Brits were colonizing in like 1910, 1913 or something, they had to build like water supply pipes. Whoa, hello Hong Kong. That came out of nowhere. Anyway, as I was saying. Look at that. What do we got? Oh yeah. Time to Papa. What are you doing up there, boy? Wrestling my jimmies. Why you come down and say hi? Anyway, the story of these monkeys is very interesting. The area that you just saw, you know, it's an example of a built-up area in Hong Kong. Now, in 1913, apparently the uh, Brits, they were here, obviously, it was a British colony, and they were trying to develop the area. They found when they put down, like, the water pipelines, people were getting super sick and poisoned. And there's this actual plant that makes this fruit that uh, is incredibly toxic to most animals and humans. So it was like even the growth of this fruit was poisoning the water supply. Now there used to be, before that, there used to be these macaque monkeys, but they disappeared probably due to uh, hunting or something like that. But anyway, long story short, they realized that the macaques loved, absolutely loved eating this orange fruit or whatever, you know, whatever it was, whatever it was called. The macaques freaking love it. They absolutely love it. So they brought some back and uh, they multiplied and there ended up being about 3,000 of them. Now there's like 17 groups or little gangs of these macaque monkeys here in these mountains. And they've, uh, they've kind of hung out in this area for, you know, since then. However, the mainland poachers came and uh, since 2006 actually, they found 38 traps set in this very forest by mainlanders um, and have caught a lot of the culprits who turned out to be mainland people trying to harvest the monkeys for their meat uh, for tr traditional Chinese medicine medical purposes and also because they consider it highly nutritious um, and particularly amongst Cantonese people so in the, just in this general region there's about 1800 uh, monkeys left over and about 300 have been killed already um, since not that long ago by mainland poachers and um, there's actually one time where this this mainland Chinese dude showed up with like a pellet gun and he was just sniping these monkeys and 
grabbing him for the bushmeat or whatever, but the, the cops showed up and a, with a bunch of volunteers to help protect the monkeys, and he just started firing at them as well, so needless to say, he went to jail. Regularly, they'll find the monkeys' bodies, um, dead ones, with, uh, with metallic wounds or sharp obje object wounds in them, which is kind of upsetting. I mean, anything for that that rare ass expensive bush meat, right? But it does seem kind of weird, right? Like obviously they're not eating monkeys because they're starving. They're going through the risk of potential massive jail times and huge fines to come over the border and steal these monkeys. And why is that? Well, believe it or not, the city that I live in, I have a family member that with a group of friends went to a monkey restaurant. This is back in the late 2000s or so. And at this monkey restaurant, they actually will take one of these macaques, and they're the same ones as from here, by the way, and they'll put it in the center of the table, and they'll leave it alive, and then you're supposed to whack it over the head with a hammer and open up its skull while it's still alive, and then you're supposed to eat the brain out of the monkey while it's alive. <laughs> that's actually what they did. I actually don't even think that's a Chinese preparation. I think that is some other country's thing, but that's, that's how they consumed it. When I heard that story, it was not from a, a person telling me that that happened to someone else, it was from the person that did it. Even they said that was very barbaric, but they, they still ate it. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's just deplorable. It's absolutely disgusting. This absolute excessive destruction and killing of all of these animals is like, to me, representative of a, of a culture that, number one, doesn't give an absolute shit about the world around them. I mean, whether it's the intense renovation and all these ghost cities springing up and fishing the seas dry and all of these crazy, um, all these crazy traditional Chinese medicines that use things that they shouldn't be using, whether or not that is indicative of a personality of someone that doesn't give a shit <laughs> about the world around them or not, I, I think so. I found him, I found him. I found you, I found you. Hey guys. Please don't run away. I just want to make friends, okay? Come on guys. How you doing? Hey little buddies. Oh man, they're everywhere. I'll have a seat too. And you know what? I'm not scared of you. I'm not scared of you. I'm just a monkey. Move. Move. Jesus Christ. They are terrified. <laughs> he doesn't want me to go through. You know what? Monkeys are pieces of shit. I hate them. They're dicks. I don't care what Chinese people do to them anymore. You had your chance. I tried to defend you. You're gonna let me pass this time. <laughs> well, that was just freaking awesome. Thanks a lot, monkeys. I was trying to get some good shots with a good camera and I dropped my lens cap on the floor and the monkey freaking took off with it. I appreciate it guys, I was trying to defend you this entire time. Now I think you deserve to be eaten by Chinese people. They bite at your legs, they bare their teeth, they growl at you, they hiss, they piss everywhere. They're terrifying animals. And I don't know why I'm trying to freaking defend them. Oh god, here we go again. What are you doing to him? You're eating worms out of its asshole. That's so gross. And we're supposed to protect you? Oh shit, I think they're after me again. Dicks. Mm, yummy. Let's see if they attack me again when I walk by. No. That guy was getting some, that's why. No one likes getting their rim job interrupted. Oh shit. Oh shit. I'm out of here. In all seriousness, that was terrifying. I didn't think it would be so scary to walk through packs of monkeys, but 
they are very territorial. <laughs> and uh, apparently I wasn't supposed to look them in the eyes. That's why they kept freaking out at me. <laughs> this guy's angry. The others are, the others are okay. Yeah, key, key thing to do is not look at Just don't look at him. Yeah. But everything has a dark side, right? Chemistry brings us all kinds of wonderful things and also brings us chemical warfare. You know, scientific discoveries send us to the moon. They also, you know, kill millions of people with atomic bombs. Medicine can bring us medicine that cures us or medicine that kills us. And this is not to blanket say Chinese medicine is completely bad, but there is something to be said for an industry that does completely decimate the environment as well as, uh, you know, decimate populations of animals. Anyway, uh, I see a massive shift in the youngsters' attitudes towards, um, towards this whole thing, you know, with people caring more about animals and the environment and stuff like that. And less of this excessive, uh, destructive, superstitious kind of belief system that a lot of Chinese people still have today. But uh, things are getting better, and we can always say that, right? But it's always good to notice and commentate on things. Man, it's just pretty out here. It's just kind of spooky. Lots of these graves. Monkey graves. Anyway, I need to find my way back down the mountain because I was supposed to do something today, and I got completely, <laughs> completely thrown off track and told the taxi driver to stop just so I could go up this weird-ass mountain. And I did find the monkeys, so it's not over, eh? Send your minions out to come get me? Huh? Is that what you guys are doing? You plan to attack? Yeah, I bet you are. Dicks. Bunch of dicks, dude. These things are pieces of shit. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this completely unprepared episode, but if you did, please uh, give me a like and tell me what you thought about it downstairs, down below. What do you think it's traditional Chinese medicine? Do you think it's a hoax? Do you think there's some truth to it? Um, I've been in many a debates about this. I'm, I'm no expert, but I just, I'm not a fan, to be honest with you. But everyone can believe what they want to believe as long as it doesn't destroy the world, right? I think we can all agree on that, Lao winners. I want to say thank you so much, Lao winners, and I'll catch you on the next one. Turns out monkeys are like aggressive, edgy teenagers. They just like to hang out and like do graffiti and make out and lick each other's assholes at the bus stop. Let us get back to civilization. I don't know how I'm gonna find a taxi. Oh, I just found one.